What's up, guys? Ziggy here with Foul Tech. Look, I have lights. Uh, today is Thursday. I got power back on uh, Tuesday night. So the crews came out and uh, they reconnected the line. And luckily, before they were able to do that, I dropped a tree that is the reason why the power went out. Uh, the tree broke about 15, 20 feet above the ground and it came down on the power line. So I figured before the power line was up, might as well chop the rest of the tree down so I don't have to worry about hitting the power line again. So uh, that is gone. And then I spent pretty much yesterday uh, on my roof with a chainsaw with a friend and we cut the tree apart took it off the house with my truck. We, uh, I contacted a tree company, get this $7,500 to get a crane out and lift it off my house and put it on the ground. $7,500. So for two chainsaws, uh, a good friend of mine, five hours of our time in 20, 30 degree weather, uh, it was off. So pretty much what happened is I tied my truck to it. We threw it up over a tree. I lifted it off the house and we just slowly chopped it up, cut it off the house. And then at one point it, it like swung away. Um, took out another window in the process, but that's okay because you pretty much, yeah, we knew it was going to happen uh, trying to get this massive tree off the house. So uh, I have been in the shop. Uh, actually, last night I was in the shop for a couple hours. It was just pretty damn cold. And today I've been in it for half the day. I finally cleaned up my yard. All the, the crap and debris is off my yard and it's going to get ready to be uh, split for next year's wood. But anyways, I figured let's do a video now that I got power. And uh, this is actually my last video on this camera. So just got an 8K camera in today. Super stoked. Can't wait. I'm going to probably try that out tomorrow because I'm probably going to do everything tonight with it. And, um, but let's build a holster. We're going to be doing a Beretta M9A1 with TLR1. I got it right here. And, uh, this is actually for the M96A1, which is the same thing, just a different barrel. And on, uh, handgunhero.com, handgunhero uh, if you guys don't know about this website, you can plug in, uh, any two holsters or any two handguns rather, and compare the sizes. So a 40 cal and a nine mil are the same dimensionally for the Beretta. So we're gonna go ahead and rock this out. It's gonna be in blood red on a Safari Land mid drop with no hood. So we're just gonna do the Safari Land three hole and let's knock this out because after this, I'm going inside to warm up because it is 45 degrees in the shop and I'm not gonna lie, it's a little chilly. Actually, it's got to the point where I look like this, but let's make, let's make a holster. So this has suppressor height sights. So we're going to start off by adding the suppressor height sights. Um, I just need to find that blocking for the suppressor height sights because I've been putting it. Oh, there it is right there. All right. So I'll just attach this. It's a, a quarter inch square dowel from Home Depot. Put that is on. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my five layers. Generally, if I have massive blocking right here, uh, what I'll do is I'll do the tape up to it. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't cut this off yet, but we're actually uh, we're gonna block over that, and this is gonna be thrown right here. So it's actually not gonna be that terrible. Um, the only thing uh, custom I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut the uh, retention plate. So no big deal. But let's get this said and done. These guys. Make sure you're square with the top of the slide. All right, so right here, we're gonna have to block right there. I'm gonna do that after the fact. I'm just gonna get this down and all set. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's water here.
the divot on this side, I'm not gonna worry about because lo and behold, we're gonna have blocking right there. So I don't care. So let's get this on here. ends to help them stay even. Okay, so right here, uh, we're gonna have to block something. So what I generally do for Berettas is I have blocking from Holster Smith. It looks like this. Uh, I will throw it in there like so or um, find another piece that fits down and goes from here to here. So it's completely up to you. I think I, yeah, something like that right there would actually work. It's just going to be bent around that because you would need a flat spot to go up over here as well. So it's all personal preference on how you want to do it. I'm going to lock that in like so. All right, now on this side, it's going to be a little bit, I wouldn't say difficult, but we're going to have to lock this in place right here, but then block all underneath it. Now I do have pieces of cut wood. Oh, hey, hey, look at that. Barrissimo. Okay. Well, looks like we're going to do just that right there. Now I'm going to put this up just a little bit, which means that's going to stay right there. This doesn't say anything about our mark cut, uh, just that it has suppressor height sights, which we already did. And we're going to lock that in place right here. I'm also going to add probably something underneath here, just so it has a little extra Go. Also, I want to note that my heat presses are on. Foam has been underneath them for hours, to be honest with you. Um, this is my seventh or eighth holster of the day. So, they've uh, been put to good use. cut this out we're going to uh, cut the blood red and get it in the press and i took it out of the press <laughs> and it must be later i'm tired because i realized and if you couldn't tell i completely forgot to block for the safety so i went ahead i took it out i reflattened um as you see the doors open here on this toaster i reflattened it put it back in here got it warmed up again cut the safety off and then blocked it for it so now it is better so it is back in the press and it's ready to come out, so let's take it out. And then I'm going in because I'm cold. Here it is right here out of the press. Um, as you see, I left this one on because that's going to get cut here anyway. And this right here, bam, there it is right there. Um, as you can see on this Beretta holster, uh, the way it is, the top of it comes out and cuts off, which is the same thing we're going to have to do on this, and that is for that blocking right there. So this is a vac form for a Beretta without a light. So I use that as a reference on where to put the other one. So this is going to be cut up the side, and then it's going to go over when it goes to this. But this is not our mark cut. Um, this is just going to be set up like this. And if you see, I moved this blocking forward because it was massive. And you could see, like, line, line, and then back down. It just didn't look right. So I thought this looked much better here. And we're going to rock it. And let's go from here. And like always, we're going to go ahead and line it up where it needs to be. I'm gonna put a line right where the trigger is. And then we're gonna come up. And uh, really, it's gonna be like right here. 
I'll just have to see where that runs. Probably right there is fine. Uh, anywho, uh, let's see here. And well, the bread M9, actually, this one could probably come out just a little bit. Straight up on that one, too. That'll look good. All right, let's see. At here. Um, ba -ba -ba yeah. All right, so I'm going to get this cut straight up, see how that looks, uh, and then uh, obviously drill these and see how it comes out. Really straightforward, cut it, drilled it. I got it to where we needed to go. Uh, so this slant right here, I decided to cut that right into the um, optics cut, I should say, although this isn't an optics cut, but it's still there just in case. Uh, this actually, I do love the way uh, Blood Red comes out and this looks phenomenal. So let's, let's just get it together and let's get it. And it's almost 10.30. 42 degrees in here right now and I want a hot shower so let's do it assembly is pretty easy before I go ahead and do stuff that you know can't get my fingers in I'm gonna go ahead and install the hardware I already did a wipe down as you can see and it does look good it actually feels good and let's get this guy in here these are half inch uh, threaded posts and these are 0.4375 and these are quarter inch. These are cut to roughly 0.4375 as well. Got a piece of dog hair on there. Get this off. All right. These are supposed to be magnetic tips, and uh, they suck. So. Not really that magnetic. All right, so let's check. This might be a little tight. Oh, a little loose. Let's tighten this up. Look like I went too tight on that. But on uh, TLR ones, when I do this, like for example on pale horse molds, the retention, how he has it, is right here. Uh, and it doesn't really work that well. So anytime I get a TLR1 mold, I actually cut into it, and the retention I put right behind the bezel, and that's where I highly recommend it. So my retention is right here, right here, on all my TLR1 holsters. Uh, if it's vacuum formed, uh, it comes right here from the factory, but I nudge it, and I put it right there. I like it. Oh yeah, all right. And we'll see you have plenty of spacing for that right there and the grip. What a lot of people, what I see is um, they don't make it so the you don't get a good purchase and you want a, a good bit between the Kydex and your finger because you know a lot of people wear gloves and you don't want it snagging on it while you're doing it. So just keep that in mind. Let's get this going. I need my hex head. And I use the UBLs that are adjustable, so you're not locked into cant or no cant or anything like that. I like the these UBLs to be like that. Square that up. And there's a Beretta on a Safari Land mid drop with a TLR1. Thank you guys for watching. This build came out awesome. And thank you everybody again for participating in the 8,000 sub giveaway. That was awesome. A huge uh, shout out to Brian again. He got the discount code and hopefully he's getting hooked up with what he needs from uh, Warner Blank at Talon Retention. So that was awesome. Once I hit uh, 9,000, 
then I'm going to do another giveaway. So uh, I'll decide what we want to do. It might be the neoprene, but I'm going to do a video on the neoprene so you know what it is and where to get it. And then, um, again, 10,000 knife kits is coming on board. Might give out a mold, might give out tooling, might give out um, material. We don't know yet. We're going to discuss that and figure it out. But until then, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful, safe, and happy new year. Uh, I think, what? No, tomorrow's Friday, so tomorrow is New Year's Eve Eve. So, yeah, I got some time. Maybe I'll do a video tomorrow as well. But, again, hope you guys learned it too. Uh, the Beretta is very tricky for blocking. Um, I highly recommend never using the handgun for it because you have to block where the barrel is, and that is a pain in the butt with that design. This is a multi-molds, and, uh, again, I can't... I love Tony's work. He does amazing work, and this is my go-to for molding if I'm doing a full press and as you can see uh, it just it works so thank you guys for watching I appreciate all you um, make something good have some fun see you later love you bye